Well hello and welcome to tutorial 46 in this series of tutorials designed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language Programming. Uh, if you're not part of our email mailing list then please go to markplex.com that's markplex.com and sign up for our email mailing list and I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or release um, new programs. So in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at intrabar persist variables and we're also going to be touching upon look inside inside bar backtesting and enable intrabar order generation and calculation but uh, this is one of those things that can be a little confusing so what I thought I'd do is explain it by way of an example. So what I've done I've chosen this bar here which is the 1250 bar on the the 10th of May and I've just set an arbitrary level here 1.27836 now what the objective is is we're going to try and count during this bar how many times price either got equal to or went above this line now if we look at it if we look at the same bar on a one minute chart you'll see a little bit more detail about what's happening in the bar and of course if we went down to tick level we'd see even more but what I've done I've drawn a box around the bar so let's just zoom in here so you can see what's happening and what happens is the price rallies to touch the line here goes above it retraces comes back up rallies back up and goes above the line above the line finally closes here and if you were to check the these values you'd see they're the same as the bar we're looking at so what we're going to try and do is count now on a one minute resolution now this will be different obviously on a some form of tick chart but on a one minute resolution what happens we touch the line here so that's one two three four so the answer is we either touch the line or go above the line on a one minute resolution four times so let's just have a little, little program I've written and uh, let's just first of all go back to the 10 minute chart and let's just look at the uh, the program that I've written to do this and then we'll just go through a few steps to uh, to make it work so first of all just ignore the tick count for the moment we'll uh, probably touch upon that later but what we're going to be concerning ourselves with is this variable here which I've called high touch and uh, essentially what I've said is if the date is the 10th of May 2010 and time is 1250 which is the bar we were just talking about and if close is greater or equal to 1.27836 then we increment high touch by one and then uh, for the same bar in other words date is the 5th of May time is 1250 then we're going to print the following information date time bar status equals two that will ret return true or false depending if we're talking about the last tick of the bar more about that later uh, the close close the tick count and high touch which is the variable that we're setting to see if we touch or go above that line which I've set at 1.27836 just an arbitrary value there so let's go to the chart and uh, I've already applied this to the chart so let's just go to the uh, easy language output bar and just to uh, to show that this is actually doing uh, what I said it's doing I'm just going to refresh that and you'll see here if we uh, go to that particular bar again that I've put the little drawn the little arrow above, uh, above using the drawing tools it's saying high touch is zero so what's actually happening is the settings that we have at the moment we are only evaluating this at the end of the bar and uh, if we just zoom in again you'll see that if we evaluate it at the end of the bar then sure enough the um, where are we? the close is actually below that line so the, at, the high touch is showing a value of zero now the reason for that is if we go to the strategies and we click on format but we do not have enable intrabar order generation and calculation set to true in other words the bar is just evaluated at the end of the bar so we're going to need to make that true uh, you can see here you've got various inputs this is in the calculation one so we've set enable intrabar order generation and calculation as true and now we'll go back to the chart and let me just clear that and then refresh so you can see what's see what what actually happens waiting for data and now you can see we've got we're looking inside the bar and effectively we've got four data points because uh, at the moment our look inside bar backtesting is not set so what TradeStation does it has a best guess as the uh, the four data points within the bar and uh, you'll see here what what uh, 
what's happening is if we just uh, find the values of the bar that it obviously um, TradeStation is setting the first data point as the open which is 1.27792 the next data point it's setting as the low because in this case low happens to be closer to the open than high then we go to high which is 127850 and finally back to close what you'll see is that uh, of these data points only one of them is actually above the uh, the line and that is the uh, the high so we're saying we've got a high touch of one but notice what's happened here is that by the end of the bar high touch is back to zero and this is because at the moment high touch is not set as an intra bar persist variable in other words at the end of each tick or imaginary tick in this case the value of high touch is set back to what it was the previous bar which was zero so uh, the first thing we're going to do is just go into the uh, strategy and we're just going to convert high touch into an intra bar persist variable and then we'll see the difference when we uh, refresh it. I'm just going to clear that again so we don't get any confusion. I'm just going to press F3 to verify that. And you'll see now that even though price has only gone over that line once, instead of forgetting the value of high touch, the program has now, that value has now persisted to the next tick. So quite correctly in this circumstance, it's showing a value of high touch of one. Okay, what we're going to do now is get a little bit more sophisticated and uh, we're going to click, uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to clear the, uh, the printout. So that's going to change. We're going to click on the, the uh, above the chart, Format, Strategies. Now we already in Format click the uh, Enable Intraday Order Generation and Calculation. What we're going to do now is click Properties for All and we're going to set up this fella here, Use Look Inside Bar Backtesting and we're going to set a uh, the interval of one minute so we're going to be looking inside the 10 minute bar at a one minute intraday interval so we're going to say okay and we're going to close that and we're going to get a completely different print statement and there's several things to notice here but uh, one of the first things you'll probably notice is high touch is saying five now if you recall from the uh, start of the tutorial if we go back to the one minute chart the actual answer we were looking for at least um, for demonstration purposes was four in other words one two three four but actually this is saying five now the reason for that is well firstly you'll probably also notice that tick count is showing a tick count of 40 and then we're resetting to zero here at the end of the bar end of the bar we can see because bar status one is equals two is true and um, what actually happens is even though we're looking at the 10 minute bar with one minute interval, TradeStation again smartly goes through each bar and works out four data points within those one minute bars. And actually what it's doing is for this bar here, you'll see that the, the high and the close at any event are above or equal to the line. So we get the, uh, the counter incremented uh, twice there. And if we were to just go and look at the uh, the print statement here you'll see three and four uh, is uh, 1.27837 and 1.27836 if we just put our mouse over the um, over the line you'll see that the uh, high is 1.27837 and the close is 1.7836 that counts two and then the fifth one is this one here where the high is above the line um, the other thing that you'll, uh, you'll need to notice about the way this thing behaves is in a circumstance such as this where we've got the, the one minute inside the, the 10 minute is the last tick is actually repeated and uh, if you remember the print statement let's just go back to the, uh, the print statement here you'll see that we've got this thing uh, bar status equals 2 and that is uh, basically saying is this the last tick of the bar if it's not, we, it's equal, the, uh, that will return false. If it is, it will return true. And you'll see on this, uh, this last, this last uh, tick here that um, it's actually returning true, but the close is the same as the previous close. Now, that's not uh, conclusive proof that they're the same, but actually um, they are repeated. And if we had not reset the, the tick count, as we're doing here on the, uh, the last tick of the bar, then this would show 41. So that is another... Uh, 
interesting little feature of this intrabar persist and uh, all the things that we've been looking at today. So anyway, that was a very quick jump through how one might use intrabar persist variables. I hope that has uh, made things a little bit clearer. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for your attention.